with the 41st pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select E.J. Overshadowed by the Pelicans' other players being injured was a high upside second-round pick in E.J. Liddell out of Ohio State. From an opening press conference, it showed just how high the organization valued E.J. when Trangian Langdon said this. A little insight on our scouting process. We have two guys in our group that if you would have stayed in the draft last year, we would have drafted you. <laughs> so, and you'll get to know them soon, but uh, <laughs> two guys in the Midwest that probably saw you play 20 times in the last two years. So, yeah, you definitely have some fans in this organization. Unfortunately, Liddell suffered an ACL tear in Summer League, which left the front office fans and his teammates feeling for E.J. So what can we expect from a rookie in his first playing season coming off an injury with a crowded front court? First, let's look at who Liddell the player is. EJ, he's one of the very best players in the country. Liddell again from deep and boy, is he feeling it. He understands who he is as a player. He's got the ability to, to be a threat inside and outside. He's gonna shoot it. And why would you do Growing up in Illinois, he was a standout player on the court. His junior year, he averaged 20 points and 8 rebounds, won the 4A state title, and won Illinois' Mr. Basketball over now fellow NBA players Ayo Dasunmu and Talon Horton Tucker. His senior year, he averaged 20 points and 9 rebounds, as well as nearly 4 blocks a game, won the 4A state championship again, and also won Mr. Basketball in Illinois again. Liddell decided to attend Ohio State University and further his education and basketball career. After a rough freshman year with his inconsistent playing time, his sophomore and junior year, he averaged 18 points, 7 boards, 2 blocks a game. Locking up future number one pick, Pelo Bencaro, in his last season with the Buckeyes. With multiple first team, all Big Ten selections, he decided to take his shot at the NBA. Offensively, he is a fantastic screen and roll player who is always a lob threat. He also has a fantastic touch and could develop a high-level NBA 3. We saw this year that he worked a lot on his shooting mechanics with Fred Vincent. Paired with his next-level pursuit of the rebound, he could truly be a special player for New Orleans. Where EJ shines the brightest is on the defensive end. At Ohio State, he switched on almost every screen that came his way. He has both the lateral quickness to deal with guards and the intelligence to go up against any players larger than he is without fouling. The only negative to EJ is that he has a smaller frame. However, that didn't stop him from playing well against future NBA bigs in college. For many fans, there is some level of fear when they see a rookie who is coming off a big injury and how that will affect the rest of his career. We have seen many players recently come off of those injuries and play very well and contribute right away in their true rookie season. Blake Griffin, Nerlens Noel, and Julius Randle are just a few names that have played very well after sustaining a major injury early in their career. With EJ, it will all come down to making himself a positive on the court, similar to Jose in his rookie year. Unfortunately, over the last two seasons, we have seen that Larry Nance Jr. has been showing signs of age. EJ will carve out his role under the wings of Nance this year. I would expect EJ to average 6-3-1 in a largely backup role until later into the season where he will get more playing time due to his energy. And after all, it's really hard to keep this guy off the court. His right hand off this pick. Branham, driving on Stewart, gets to the baseline, finds Liddell, the tie at 63! Indiana has a timeout, will they use it? No! What a tip to the...